Hello, and today we'll be working with a cell respiration lab uh, dealing with yeast, uh, sugar, and we'll use bromethyl blue as our indicator. Uh, so we'll go ahead and start getting it set up by first uh, putting water in each one of these test tubes. Uh, so here we go. Finish off our last one. Uh, so now we have 10 milliliters of water in each one of our test tubes. Uh, next, we're going to make a sugar solution. We're going to use a little later on. So I have an uh, empty beaker, and I'm going to put 50 milliliters of the same distilled water in there. Uh, so this particularly graduated cylinder measures to 25, so I'm just going to fill up twice. And once we have our 50 milliliters of water, next we're going to get uh, one gram of So here at the scale, we'll just put our weight belt on and we we'll scoop out until we get zero of the scale and then scoop out until we have one gram of, of sugar. It doesn't have to be perfect, but we want to be pretty close to uh, 1.0 gram. So we have 0 0.98. So 1.04 is going to be good enough for this lab. So then we take our sugar and we pour it in with our water and we just swirl around, mix it up uh, so it's mixed into our solution. Uh, we'll let that one sit as we move on to our next step of adding our solution, our bromethyl blue solution to each test tube. Uh, so at the step in each one of our test tubes, uh, we're going to place 10 drops of this bromethyl blue. Uh, bro bromethyl blue is an indicator. Uh, in the presence of carbon dioxide, it's going to turn to a yellow appearance. As the concentration of carbon dioxide increases, it's going to become a stronger or darker yellow. Uh, it's gradual change as the pH of the water changes. Uh, so we'll add that to each one of our test tubes, and then we'll catch you after we got it added to each one. Uh, once you have the bromethyl blue added to each one of your test tubes, you want to gently swirl it uh, to mix it uh, throughout that test tube. So we have it added to each one, and we're just going to gently swirl it to help it mix evenly. Uh, also, as we start weighing things in our next step, weighing the yeast, uh, it should have some time to help uh, to diffuse throughout that test tube. Uh, but we'll start mixing each one up. In our next step, uh, we're going to be weighing out 0.8 grams of yeast. Uh, so we have our yeast here, it comes in a glass jar, or sometimes it comes in little packets. And we just want to weigh out 0.8 grams. Uh, yeast is a fungus. It's able to go through respiration, both uh, aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration, or what's called fermentation. Uh, so we have about 0.82 grams in that. In this case, uh, we want right around 0.8. We don't want much more than 0.82 or 3, uh, but that's of a uh, yeast, that fungus. And we're going to put that 0.8 grams into each one of our test tubes. So we're going to weigh that out uh, six different times and repeat that same process. So take that back over, and we're going to pour it into each one of our test tubes. So we're just going to uh, fold or collapse uh, that weigh belt in, and we're just going to pour it into our test tube. Once it's in there, we do want to gently swirl around, mix it around, or we'll poke it around so it can uh, get throughout that test tube and it doesn't create a seal at the top of our test tube. Uh, we'll repeat that for all six and then catch you then. Uh, so now we're adding these to our last test tube. And again, once we add it, we do want to make sure we uh, gently swirl it around. We don't want to be stirring it hardcore or anything, uh, but we do want to uh, make it so it doesn't make like a seal on top of our liquid. So we want to gently swirl it around and let it get throughout that testing. Then our next step, uh, we're going to take this uh, sugar solution we made earlier and we're going to place the number of drops into each test tube. So first one gets zero, so no drops. Uh, second one, we're going to put five drops in. 
one, two, three, four, five. And we'll do that for each one and test tubes going up five drops in each one. Uh, after we do that, we'll catch you, swirl them around, and start our timer. Uh, so now we got all 20, all our drops in each one of our test tubes. Uh, you want to record that starting color for each test tube. I will swirl them around a little bit right now as we're getting started as well. And then we'll do our next color uh, recording at three minutes. Again, you want to be specific with the color. You don't want to just say green or yellow or blue. Uh, you want to be specific if it's dark or, or light. Be specific with that coloration. And now that we mix them, uh, we'll let it sit. We have our timer going as well. Try to get it set up so you can see the timer in all six tubes. And again, we'll record our coloration every three minutes. Uh, so it's been three minutes, so uh, we want to look at that coloration. And spe specifically, we're looking at uh, changes in color and how that change may be different between different levels uh, within these test tubes. Uh, so again, record your color, be, make sure you're being specific so we can have a good comparison of each one in test tubes. Uh, we'll let it go for three more minutes and catch it at six minutes. So now it's been six minutes. Again, we're looking at change in color and how it may be different uh, between these different uh, test tubes. Uh, so again, record your coloration. Uh, we want to be specific, lighter, darker. Uh, make sure you're specific on that coloration. Uh, here's our zero, five, 10, 15, 20, and 25 drops. Uh, so now it's been nine minutes. So again, we want to record our observation. Again, we're looking for differences uh, where things are darker, where things are lighter. Uh, so in this case, definitely at the zero end, uh, we, we have our zero. Uh, it definitely still has some green appearance. As we move down, it's definitely getting darker in yellow color. Uh, by the time we get to the end one, the 25 drops, uh, it's a dark yellow, almost to a beige yellow at this point. Uh, so that's nine minutes. We'll let it go for another six minutes. Uh, record our observations at 12 and 15. So now we're at 12 minutes. Again, we want to record our coloration uh, starting at zero, working our way across to the 25 uh, drops. Uh, again, we're looking at changes and differences in color between these different test tubes. So now we're at 15 minutes, time for our final observation. Again, we start with zero drops on the left. Uh, it still has that green coloration to it. As we work across, you can see that they've turned yellow, uh, and it's actually a different hue of yellow as we go farther down versus uh, the beginning where it's only got five drops, 10 drops, 15, 20, and our 25 drops. Uh, so hopefully you were able to see uh, as we progress down from zero drops to five, to 10, to 15, to 20, to 25, uh, we had more cell respiration going on with the more glucose available or the more sugar available uh, we were able to have more of that respiration take place creating more carbon dioxide so again in this lab we were looking at the respiration done by yeast uh in different concentrations of sugar so we had different drops uh first one had zero drops all the way through 25 drops and we were looking at how that affected the rate of cell respiration or respiration uh within these different test tubes uh, so hopefully you picked up some information. Have a great day.